During the Second World War, the demand for labor by wartime industries was high. Since many men in the labor force were enlisted in the armed forces, Small Arms Limited offered jobs to single women, married women without children, as well as young men who weren't old enough to serve. These are the stories of six people who worked there during that time. I was working at Eaton's at the time and I uh, was running a big loom and I uh, remember seeing on a poster somewhere that they were hiring at small arms so well, I wasn't making good money as I was saying and I thought well I'll go there and maybe I can get in as a machinist. It was advertised everywhere and you had to wait till you were 18 which I wasn't quite at that time. Plus I was born in Italy, so they wouldn't take me at first either, so I had two strikes against me. But eventually, after I turned 18, they did take me in. And I had a sister, Pat, who was working in the small arms, and she says, why are you going all the way into John Inglis when you're closer to home at the small arms? So anyway, I applied for the small arms, and I got in. The reason I came to the small arms to work uh, Helda's husband was overseas. Pat, my other sister's husband, was overseas. And uh, Margaret, her husband, was going overseas. And I thought, well, they're all way over there. And uh, I should be doing something here. Okay, I was only 12 years old, but I thought I should be doing something. so. I came down to the small arms, and uh, my brother Tom wanted to come with me. We're twins, but he's shorter than I am. And when we saw the personnel manager, he said, uh, I believe you're 15, because I couldn't say I was 16, because you had to have a registration card when you were 16. So I told him I was 15. And he says, I believe you're 15. But he says, I don't think this fellow's 15. But he must be, because he's your twin brother, so they hired him too. So we worked in the small arms when we were 12 years old. Was born, I should say, in Saskatchewan and raised there. And at my age of 17, I was a little restless. I had always wanted to be in Ontario. In the paper where I lived one day, I noticed an advertisement to um, come down here with the government to work in small arms. I thought, this is my opportunity. So what do you know? I was accepted. My application was accepted and I was so happy. And I worked at small arms in the summer of 1942 and 1943. In 42, I worked in the wood shop, which was designated the butcher shop because so many people were hurt. I was there when one guy was putting a piece of wood through a machine and somebody distracted him and he forgot to let go and he lost his five fingers. That's why they called it the butcher shop. And so I worked there the first year and I uh, went back to school. And in 1943, I came to work again, and they said, well, you quit last year, and we don't want to hire anybody just for the summer. And I said, well, I'm not going back to school. I lied. But that year, I worked in the body shop, where some of these people worked. But I didn't work on the machine. I had a little truck that I used to pull parts around. And uh, that was very interesting. And one time, I nearly knocked the guy over. He was a Bell Telephone guy who was working on a ladder, working things. And it was a guy that I'd stopped speaking to when we were 12 years old for some reason or other. And we spoke. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm going down to join the Navy the next day. So I went with him, and we joined the Navy. Oh. And that's it. And they started me off sorting out nuts and bolts and rivets and little stuff one day. And the next day, they took me over 
and put me at a desk and put me uh, in front of a, a steel, a polished steel table with a height gauge, micrometers, and taught me how to run it. And I was on the guard trigger line and uh, I had to take all these measurements and they had to be exceedingly precise or they were rejected. And if they got out of line at all, they stopped the line right away and the bosses came in. And I worked at the small arms building in the body department for four and a half years. I say some of the best years of my life because it was depression up till then and this gave us a break to earn some money and do things that we couldn't do before. You worked on different machines all the time. Um, the lathes, the grinders, the slot machines. Slot machine was mainly my main machine. It slotted the, the hole where the bullet went in. But you, you had to work on all the machines whenever you needed to. We had a, a magazine called The Foresight, and I was the representative and did some writing for that. That was interesting. I got in, it was a place called the AID, Army Inspection Department. It was like a gated part of the small arms. And uh, it was like the final inspection of the Lee Enfield rifle. Mind you, we were putting bullets in and making sure that they fired out and all, all that sort of stuff. But at the very end, uh, it was very nice too. They took us out onto the range and let us shoot the gun that we had been playing around with. That's, that's the memories of small arms and, and the people that we had met there were, were really, really nice. I was operating machines um, in the body department. I remember they're making the body of the rifle, of course. Mainly women that were in the building. I mean, there were very few men. There were all, there were hundreds, if not thousands of women in the place. They brought them in from all over the country. And this one woman working beside me, she's going away with her, along with her work and everything, and I look down and there's a finger in the coolant by itself. I mean, it's been cut off. And she doesn't realize it. And then all of a sudden she looked down and she screamed and they took her out in a stretcher. But uh, like, it's quite a shock for a young fellow to see all that, you know, it's not very pleasant. Uh, I will say that I, um, I enjoyed working there. Uh, I think we did a good job while we were there. Uh, turned out a lot of rifles. At the end of my assembly line, which contained um, electric drills, big, big ones, and the women, all women, run those. They never sat, they stood constantly, eight hour shifts. They stood there and used these electric drills. As the components came off the assembly line, there was a bench. I and a couple of other inspectors were sitting there. We took those components and our job was to gauge them to the proper specifications. Now, if there was the least little thing off center, it was discarded. After all, you know why. So it may look sometimes that there's a lot being discarded. A little burr of metal can do damage to one of those guns. We had the um, Stan guns and the um, Lee Enfield, yeah. I never ever made a mistake and I made sure the other two girls on the other side were just as good because we knew there was a life in our hands and it was up to us to save that life. So that's why we were so particular 
in everything. It, it was a job that we were proud of. I was proud of, very proud. Today, Building 12, also known as the Small Arms Inspection Building, is a historic reminder of our past. Designated under the Ontario Heritage Act, it has become an exciting creative hub for a wide range of arts and cultural programs. This unique venue showcases dynamic exhibitions, events, and interactive experiences, and provides a space that fosters collaboration and community building. 